The Lucy Craft Laney Museum of Black History, in partnership with the Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau, is pleased to present the past, present, and future of the Civil Rights Movement in Augusta, Georgia. I got a call from Carrie Mays, who owned Mays Mortuary, asking me if I would come to the funeral home. She wanted me to look at a body. When we got to the funeral home, Carrie told us that she had picked up this young boy named Charles Oakman, 16 years old. She was told that he got uh, murdered in the jail cell at the county jail. But she could not buy into that based on the condition of the boy's body. She, she felt something else had happened to this young boy. The following day, I had a radio talk show. I worked for James Brown at his radio station on Sundays. When I got to the radio station, I started talking about what I had seen and what the officials had said. Calls started coming in and people were inquiring about how did this happen, how could it happen. A lot of questions that I couldn't answer, but I told the, the audience that if they would meet me at the county jail when I got off the air, that I would try to find some answers. Well, when I got off the air and got down to the county jail, May Park was about five deep with people lying in the streets wanting answers. Sheriff Foots Atkins had called in all of his deputies to surround the jail. When we got inside, there was Bill Barton, who was the district attorney, Fritz Atkins, the sheriff, and some other officials around. We inquired about this boy's death and they told us that the inmates killed him, he fell off the bunk. The same thing they had told Carrie Mays that had happened to Charles Oakman. Well, I couldn't buy into that. When I left the jail, Reverend Hamilton was standing outside. Reverend Hamilton was the pastor of Tabernacle Baptist Church at the time. He invited us to come to his church that night, which was Sunday night, and have a rally. We went to Tabernacle. I got up and told what little I knew about the situation. Other people got up and spoke, and it was determined that the following day, which was Monday, that I would go and meet with Mackie Maharan, who was the chairman of the county commission, and try to resolve the jail issue of putting juveniles in the jail with adults. Well, I met with Mac and Maharan up on the ninth floor of the municipal building. In the room with us was Lieutenant Tommy Owes, who was a black officer on the Augusta Police Department. Tommy Owes was keeping vigil of the crowd below the courthouse. The crowd was gathering outside and swelling, getting larger. And Tommy kept reminding us of the increase of the crowd outside. And sure enough, right after then, someone climbed the flagpole and snatched the American flag and also the Georgia flag down. When these flags started burning, we hurried up and got our memorandum together and I went downstairs to address the crowd with that memorandum. By the time I got downstairs, the crowd was worked up pretty good. Uh, I started to read what we had written, 
but the crowd was in no mood to listen to anything I was saying. So the crowd moved from the courthouse and began to move in different directions. When I got in front of the YMCA, which was on 9th Street, a Riceboro Road bus, public bus, passed by at that particular time. And someone picked a rock up and tossed it at the bus. And from that one rock throw, other people picked up rocks that were in the crowd going back to 9th and Greenwich Street, which had been suggested by Reverend Sims, where we would have a rally there. And when we got to Miller and 9th Street, the rocks started uh, uh, throwing and and from that point on, by the time we got to 9th and Granite Streets, everybody was just about participating. Everybody that was in the crowd moving from the courthouse. A lot of resources were lost. Stores in the black community got burned down. Blacks burned down stores that served them. Of course, when you're right, and you're not sensible at all at that time, I don't know why people think so hard on riots because they're out of control. It served some purposes, but it didn't have power to do the things that it needed to be done. And a lot of issues got swept under the rug. A lot of issues didn't get heard because they were not politically correct. And Augusta ended up being, in two or three years, the Augusta it was before the riot. Things went back to the way they were. And, uh, and stayed that way for a long time. For more information about our black heritage and to see our interactive map on black history locations in Augusta, Georgia, visit our website, lucygraffnightymuseum.com.